Notice what he goes on to say in verse 23. You have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death. Notice that Peter doesn't get into some theodicy and some explanation as to how all of these things transpire. The reality is, is that God is comprehensively sovereign, and the reality is, is that you are sinful and lawless, and you need to repent. Notice that in verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were caught to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You see, the problem of hyper-Calvinism is not only that it removes God or removes Christ from the sinner, but it removes the responsibility of sin from the sinner. Because in hyper-Calvinism, you're only doing what you were decreed to do. You are only doing what God planned for you to do. It's to minimize the responsibility of the sinfulness of man. Perhaps that's why more persons aren't coming to a knowledge of the Savior because they don't see themselves as sinful for, before God. They've accepted the hyper-Calvinistic lie. Oh yeah, God's decreed everything. That part's not a lie. But therefore, it doesn't matter what we do. But that's not how the scripture deals with the second half. God is absolutely comprehensively sovereign. He has decreed whatsoever comes to pass, but you are responsible. When you act the way you do, say as a Jerusalem sinner, and you cry away with him, away with him, crucify him, that's your sin. You need to repent. You need to believe the gospel. 